Three-Dimensional Vectors, Level 2. In this video, we will go over slightly more challenging examples that require the application of various concepts associated with three-dimensional vectors. All right, let's go ahead and jump straight into the first example. Find vector z given that vector u equals 1, 2, 3, vector v equals 2, 2, negative 1, and vector w equals 4, 0, negative 4, where vector z equals 5u minus 3v minus 1 half w. All right, in this problem, we need to use the properties of vector addition to find the sum of these vectors. We first need to carry out a scalar multiplication for vector u, v, and w. So let's go ahead and carry out the scalar multiplication first. Next, it is just a matter of adding or subtracting the vectors component-wise. Doing that and simplifying, we obtain the final answer equal to negative 3, 4, and 20. Once again, notice that vector arithmetic in R cubed is essentially the same as in R squared. All right, let's move along to the next example. Determine which of the vectors is or are parallel to vector z, where vector z equals 3, 2, negative 5. All right, recall that two vectors are parallel if one vector is a constant multiple of the second vector. For this problem, we need to find or show that there exists a scalar that generates vector z when multiplied by the vectors shown below. For the first vector, we are essentially trying to show that vector z equals c times vector v. We can go ahead and break apart the vector equation into its three components as follows. Then, we go ahead and solve for the constant c. Notice that in all three components, we obtained the same constant. This means that we can multiply vector v by the scalar negative one half and obtain vector z, meaning that vector v is parallel to vector z. For the second vector, we do the same and break apart the vector equation into components and solve for c. Doing that, we obtain the following values for c. Once again, notice that every component has the same value for the scalar. This means that vector w is also parallel to vector z. Lastly, we do the same for vector u and break apart the vector equation into separate components and solve for the scalar, obtaining the following. Notice that the x and y components are the same, but the z component is negative. We need all three scalars to be the same for all components, including the sign. Since this scalar does not match the rest of the scalars on the other components, we can conclude that vector u is not parallel to vector z. So vector z is parallel to vector v and vector w only. All right, let's move along to the next example. Use vectors to determine whether the points a, b, and c are collinear. All right, let's go ahead and plot these points so we can get a visual for this problem. We are asked to show that these three points lie along the same line. In other words, they are collinear. We can show this by using vectors by first assuming that they are collinear and break the line into two pieces, or in this case, two vectors, making sure that we use a common point for both vectors. In this case, let's go ahead and find the components of the vector represented by points A and B and the vector represented by points A and C. To find the components of the first vector, we simply subtract point A from point B and obtain the following for the components of vector AB. And then we do the same for vector AC and subtract point A from point C, obtaining the following for the components of vector AC. Now, if both of these separate vectors lie in the same line, they should be parallel to one another. So we need to show that they are a constant multiple of each other. So we go ahead and set up our vector equation, and by inspection, we see 
that we can obtain vector AB by multiplying vector AC by negative 2. Since both of these vectors are parallel and they pass through the same point, in this case point A, we can conclude that they are collinear. Alright, let's try the next example. Find the magnitude of vector v, where v equals negative 4i plus 3j plus 7k. Alright, here we have a vector written using the standard unit vectors. Recall that this form is very similar to the component form of a vector. In this case, each of the scalars represents the x, y, and z components respectively. So to find the magnitude, we simply use the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Doing that and simplifying, we obtain the square root of 74 as the final answer. Alright, let's try the next example. Determine the value of c that satisfies the equation, the magnitude of scalar c times vector u equals 4, where vector u equals negative i plus 2j plus 3k. Alright, we want to find the values of scalar c that satisfies the vector equation. We are given vector u written with unit vectors, so we can go ahead and rewrite this expression into its component form as follows. Next, let's go ahead and substitute the component form of vector u into the vector equation. Then we go ahead and multiply scalar c into each of the components of vector u as follows. Notice that up to this point, the vector equation is essentially stating that the magnitude of this vector should equal 4. So we go ahead and find the expression for the magnitude of this vector by using the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Simplifying the vector equation, we obtain the following. Now it is just a matter of solving for the scalar c. So we go ahead and square both sides, solve for c squared, and then take the square root of both sides. Doing that, we obtain two solutions, positive and negative, the square root of 8 over 7. Let's go over the final example. Find a vector v with magnitude of 3 halves and in the same direction as vector b, where vector b equals 2, negative 2, and 1. Alright, here we are asked to generate a vector that has a magnitude of 3 halves and points in the same direction as vector b. We first need to extract the unit vector from vector b. This way, we can obtain a vector that has the direction of vector b and will have a magnitude equal to 1. This way, when we multiply it by a scalar, only the length of the vector will change, keeping the same direction in the process. Let's start by finding the magnitude of vector b. Simplifying the expression, we obtain 3 as the magnitude of vector b. Next, let's go ahead and find the unit vector. So we take the components of vector b and divide them by the magnitude of vector b. Doing that, we obtain the following components for the unit vector. Now it is just a matter of multiplying this unit vector by the magnitude of vector v. Since the unit vector points in the same direction as vector b, it is just a matter of scaling the vector to the appropriate magnitude, in this case, 3 halves. Doing that, and simplifying the expression, we obtain 1, negative 1, and 1 half for the components of vector v. This vector has a magnitude of 3 halves and points in the same direction as vector b. Okay, in our next and final video on three-dimensional vectors, we will go over some more challenging examples.